welcome to the 2016 Geneva Motor Show, the most important show of the year. And this is our guide to the show's stars. Seat have been teasing us for years about an SUV and it's finally here. It's called the Attacker. Engine wise, the range starts off with a one litre, three cylinder turbo petrol engine pushing out 114 brake horsepower. There's also a 1.4 turbo with 1.6 diesels, two litre diesels, front wheel drive and four wheel drive. To be arriving in September, priced from £18,000. This is the Q2 and it's the smallest Audi SUV ever. Now, whilst the looks are pretty unremarkable, apart from the chisel scalloped outside along the doors, it's pretty much same old, same old Audi, which means it'll sell by the bucket load. But the big thing about this car is the interior because it has a wealth of personalization options. Prices should be kicking off from around the 20,000 pound mark and we should be getting it in the UK at around November. Now in the world of hypercars, they don't come much more special than a brand new Bugatti. And the one behind me is the brand new Chiron, the replacement for the Veyron. And would you just look at it, it looks fantastic. Okay, so the raw figures. Well, we've got an eight litre quad turbo W16 engine. Now how much power does it produce, I hear you ask? Well, it's 1,479. So how much is it gonna cost? Well, it's gonna cost over 1.4 million pounds. They're only producing 500 of them, so get your order in quick. Now you can always count on the Italians wowing the crowds here at Geneva, and Lamborghini have done it with this. It's the Centario. This is one massive, wonderful looking coupe. Under the bonnet, under the engine cover I should say, is a six and a half litre V12 pushing out 760 brake horsepower. Nought to 62 takes 2.8 seconds. Now Lamborghini are only gonna make 40 of them, 20 coupes and 20 roadsters. They cost 1.6 million pounds each. The problem being, they're all sold. It's the Maserati Levante, and yes, Maserati have finally done an SUV. Powering the Levante in the UK will be just one diesel engine, a three litre V6, and it's mated to a permanent four-wheel drive system. The big problem for the Levante is the Jaguar F-Pace, which does quite a lot of the same things and is arguably a bit prettier. It's the new GT and for the moment it's just a concept car. Now it's powered by a one litre three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine straight out of the Vauxhall Corsa, which means it could go into production tomorrow. If only they change a few things like the red wheel and the interior. I just really want Vauxhall to make it because I think it looks so exquisite. MPVs, they're dead, aren't they? Well, Renault thinks so. That's why for its new Scenic, it's given it a bit of a crossover theme. Renault hasn't forgotten practicality. It's still bigger on the inside than the old Scenic. You can have it as a five-seater or as a seven-seater in the Grand Scenic version. Renault hasn't forgotten efficiency with this car. The entry-level 1.6-litre diesel, for instance, should come in at under 100 grams per kilometre of CO2. We'll be seeing more of this car later this year I think it's a winner. This car debuted a new powertrain for Skoda. It's a petrol-electric hybrid powertrain, 1.4 petrol engine mated an electric motor. Whether or not VW are going to allow Skoda to use this or not, we don't know. But if they do, it should be very exciting for Skoda. Prices should be kicking off from around the £20,000 mark, and if they do so, we'll significantly undercut cars like the Land Rover Discovery Sport. It's the Tesla Model X. It's the seven-seat SUV version of the Tesla. Range of this car is about 250 miles. 
This particular one is a P90D, so it'll get from 0 to 62 miles an hour in under three seconds. It'll be going on sale later this year. Tesla haven't confirmed the prices, but it should kick off from around the £50,000 mark. It's going to sell like hotcakes. This is probably the most important car for people like you and I. Why? It's because it's probably going to be the next Honda Civic. Now, for the time being, it's just a design concept, but Honda has a habit of putting its design concepts largely unchanged straight into production. And of course, there'll be a choice of engines from 1 litres, 1.5, some diesels, but most importantly of all, there will be a Type R along at some point. Now, this doesn't happen very often. It's the launch of a brand new Aston Martin. It's called the DB11. Now, this car is new in two very important ways. One, it debuts a brand new design language. You'll see it's a lot more meaner, it's a lot more harder, especially from the back. The back looks totally different from any other Aston Martin we've seen for a very long time. Two, there's a brand new engine. It's a twin turbo V12 pushing out 600 brake horsepower. Now, Aston Martin, assure me that this sounds like the old, fabulous, naturally aspirated six litre V12. I'm going to leave you now to carry on looking at this gorgeous car. If you want to find out more about all the cars here at Geneva, check out the latest issue of Auto Express. But from me, for now, bye bye.